Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to change the circular polarized antennas on my iFlight DC2 drone here from the stock antennas, which are the DJI left hand circular polarized antennas, to lightweight custom antennas just like the TransTech Beta drone. By custom antennas, basically, they are nothing more than the antenna inside the rubber ducky generic 5.8 GHz stock antennas like this one here. When we remove this outer tubing, you will find the antenna itself, which is actually a really short piece of signal element that is about 11 mm in length and it's really light. So the TransTech Beta has two of these antennas to save weight. And on the bench here, I have another antenna. This one is similar to the custom antenna of the TransTech Beta, but instead of quarter wave, it's a full wave. So it will be four times the length of this. Basically, the full wavelength of 5.8 gigahertz is about five centimeters. But depending on the velocity factor of the material you use for the signal element, you have to multiply that full wave length by the velocity factor. So in the case of RG316 is 0.7. So 0.7 times 5 centimeters would be the length of the full wavelength antenna in here. And by the way, this used to be very popular because they offer a better performance than the quarter wave antenna. I have these two antennas here from GetFPV. These are dipole antennas. So instead of having a signal element like so, the signal element is actually pointing in one direction and there's a ground pointing to the other direction. If I focus on the camera, you will be able to see what I mean. So you could see there's a um, PCB trace here going this direction. And this one would be ground. And on the other side, you could see there's another PCB trace going in the opposite direction and that would be signal. So it's like those bunny ears TV antennas where you have two antennas pointing like that. This is ground and this is signal. But they make it really small. So I'm going to use two of these on my drone there. But now we have a problem. As you all know, the DJI FPV goggles use left-hand circular polarized antennas like this one here so that they will match the antennas on the drone. A lot of people have upgraded these antennas to the TrueRC X-Air antenna, which is actually nothing more than a crosshair antenna. So if you don't know what a crosshair antenna is, this is how it looks like on the inside. So if you have two of these on this side, and another two over here, basically two pairs of the XR antennas, you get really good performance. But we can't use the XR antennas for our project because they are circular polarized and using a circular polarized antennas on the receiving side to match linear polarized antennas on the transmitting side will mean that you lose 3 dB of gain. To solve the problem on the goggles, we could use patch antennas which are linear polarized like this one here. This is only 9 dB, although there are two signal elements matched together. So I'm going for a higher gain antenna with a wide beam, just like the X-Air. And my choice would be the bi-quad antenna. The bi-quad packs a significant amount of gain, which is about 11 dB. And it has a wide beam of about 70 degrees, which is pretty similar to the X-Air antenna or the crosshair antenna. And look at this circuit board here. This will be the signal element and this is the ground plane of the antenna. When I did up the gerbil files from image, GLCPCB actually rejected my files because they are not in the correct layers. Anyway, I asked my friend to do it professionally using gerbil software and he made this for me. So without further ado, I'm going to cut here and have the ground plane, which is the refractor. And then we're going to cut this portion and this portion and have the signal element. Next step will be to solder this braided wires to the top part here and the signal element to the other solder tab here. I'll do that and show you how it looks like. After soldering the RG402 coaxial 
to the signal element here via these two solder points. You need to find a spacer to elevate this signal element by exactly 13.5 mm from the refractor. Here I'm using a carbon plate with aluminum brackets and the combined height happens to be 13.5 mm. So I'm able to keep the signal element perfectly parallel to the refractor surface like so. And now I could solder this part here. Alright, after all that soldering, the PCB by quad antenna is done and this is how it looks like. If you notice, I did solder the coaxial to the back of the refractor as well to give it additional strength. I also checked for short circuit between these two solder joints. It's important that there isn't a shot here, otherwise the bi-quad will not work properly. Here's one, and the second one, the third one, and the fourth one. Yes, we need four of this for our DJI goggles, and for the bite frost if you have a bite frost as well. And now it's time to test. Not at a few, but I'm trying to measure the SWR, standing wave ratio to make sure that it's functioning properly. Alright, let me get to scan mode and do a scan. Here's the moment of truth. Alright, you can see the green line going up now. And it looks like it performs very well at the lower part of the 5.8 GHz band. And in fact, it's not doing too bad at the furthest end of the spectrum, which is at 5945 is still about 1.5 VSWR, which is good. It should be consistent because I'm using PCB for this build. So let's test the second one. Oh, wait a minute, let me get back. I don't want to burn out the VTX inside this meter. Okay, let's randomly pick the second one. It should all be consistent, like I've said. Scan and scan again. The curve should go up now. Yep. It's the exact same curve as you can see. This is why manufacturers use PCB for antenna because it's very consistent and precise. All right, the next step is to put this onto the goggles and go to the field. Before we get onto the field, we need to swap out the antennas on the drone itself. To do that, it's really easy. Just remove the six screws, and then we can remove the top plate. And this way, you could access the antennas. So these are the stock DJI antennas. And on the scale, they weigh 7.7 grams. Now, these are the new linear antennas. And on the scale, it's only 3.4 grams. So it's less than half the weight of the original antennas, which is why the manufacturer of the TransTech Beta drone actually swapped out the heavy antennas with the lightweight linear ones so that they could keep that drone just below 250 grams to avoid registration. Okay, I'm going to put on these antennas and then show you how it looks like. Alright, the antennas are installed now on the drone and this is how they look like. Here I have their signal pointing up to the sky and the ground pointing downwards to the ground. This will give it the best performance. And if the drone is traveling forward, the antenna is basically vertical from the side view. With the signal pointing this way, you have a donut radiation pattern this way. And the other one will have another donut radiation pattern going that way. So from the front view, you can see that they are 90 degrees. That will offer the best performance. All right, finally, we can now head to the field and see how this flies. All right, here I am at the field. Basically, I could not find a public park because all the parks are closed during lockdown. But I managed to find this vacant spot of land right here. And I could do some range testing. All right, here's the first test using the stock antennas and the DC-2 drone. Alright, here's the second test using the linear bi antennas on the goggles. 
So they are positioned for vertical polarization. And the cord here with those tiny dipole antennas. Now we have the two footages side by side for comparison. And this is the part where we are getting a weaker signal, so we will see more pixelation. Right here we could compare the footages and see which one has more pixelation. Basically the one on the left with the bicord antenna seems to be doing a little bit better, but it's not a big difference as you can see. For the most part the flying experience is similar. And as soon as the drone approaches a clearing, the image starts to clear up on its sides, which is normal because we are flying in the DJI focus mode, which the center part will try to remain as focused as possible. Since the bicorn antenna is long range, I decided to fly further. And here you can see I'm trying to rotate myself to the right in an attempt to keep the antenna facing my drone. At this stage, I realized that I could not tell whether I am facing the antenna correctly or not, but I decided to just keep on flying. Here I'm passing these tall trees, and it's not really a good test for penetration because we are not getting behind trees and, and stuff, but I'm just trying to fly straight ahead. I think we are approaching about 200 meters here, and still getting a pretty good image. So let's keep going. Now it's starting to rain, so I really have to go back, land the drone before the rain gets heavier. As you can see, I'm trying to speed up, trying to get the drone back as soon as I could. almost there so I'm just going full speed ahead. As soon as I am approaching myself I realize that my antenna is not facing the right direction and it's kind of amazing that we are able to get a pretty good image back there. Well that was a quick test of the linear polarized setup I have here. I did not go very far as you can see and basically it's starting to rain so I have to stop the flying. I could feel that there is a little bit of improvement in the video quality but because I did not fly that far, I could not tell the full potential of these antennas. That's all I have for this video, I hope you like it and see you in the next one.